back to chat with Shani. This week we're starting a new series called CISA, How Do You Do It? We're getting a bunch of CISAs to come along and tell us about the process, how they got to where they are, and if it's worth all the stress, the drama, the tears, but also the smiles and laughs that they've encountered along the way. Today, we have a very special guest, a dear friend of mine. We've studied together. We've worked together. We've ended up both living in Ireland at the same time, like overlapping seasons. And he's just an amazing person. Salman, welcome to Chats with Shani. It is awesome to finally have you on this show or on my YouTube channel. So please <laughs> tell us a bit more about yourself. How long has it taken you to qualify? Where are you at the moment? And what's your current job title? Hey, guys. Firstly, Shana, thanks so much for having me and that awesome introduction. Um, to be honest with you, I was sitting here geeking like a little child. Um, but no, it's, it's really been a special um, journey with, with Shana. So just a, a bit about myself. I'm born and bred in Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I did my undergrad and my postgrad studies at UWC with Shana. Um, I did some academic articles again with Chanel. We shared an office and loads of laughs, some tears as well. <laughs> and then um, I did my articles at EY Cape Town. I did a small stint abroad at EY Boston and then came back to Cape Town, did a very, very small stint back at EY Cape Town and then decided that I want to spread my wings a bit and move to Europe. I'm currently in Dublin, Ireland for the past three and a half years. Um, and to be honest with you, it's been absolutely amazing. Um, the experience, the quality of life, and also just the exposure I'm getting is unbelievable. Um, I moved over with KPMG Dublin. So I was in audit for just over two and a half years. And then re very recently in June of this year, I decided to get out of audit um, so I'm currently an associate director at a private equity and mezzanine finance company. Um, so essentially I am in charge of the finance component and then also some of the operation, although this is a separate COO, um, but I'm absolutely loving it. I enjoy what I do. I enjoy where I am and I honestly couldn't feel more blessed. Oh man, I just have to tell you this. That literally when you said I'm associate director, like my eyes were swelling up with tears because I'm like, I'm so proud of my <laughs> Oh man, you're, you're too good. And, and to be honest with you, Chanel, hey, I was thinking um, when, when you sent me um, the, the invite, I was thinking, geez, this chick actually really had an impact on my life. Because I don't know if you can recall when we were sitting, um, I think we were on the fourth floor in the EMS building when we were sharing an office there was this part that I won't go into too much detail about where I was offered an amazing opportunity to author an auditing textbook. And Chanel was literally there with me through everything. So like I'd write a paragraph of content and then I'd turn to Chanel and be like, hey, can you quickly just listen to this? Just tell me if it sounds good. And she's really been through it all. Um, so yeah, I, I completely understand how you're feeling right now. Overwhelmed with pride and joy. Oh, thank you so much. Wait, wait, before we get too emotional, let's just carry on with this interview. <laughs> so, Salman, obviously, this had to start somewhere. You know, the drive wanted to become a chartered accountant. So, tell us when and why did you decide this path? So, believe it or not, hey, I actually wanted to become a doctor. Um, CASA was not the first thing on my to-do list. Um, so just a bit of a backdrop and, and some backstory. I come from like a really, really poor family. Um, we, like my mom was a single mother with 10 kids surviving on the salary of a, of a librarian. So from our perspective, we were always encouraged to change our circumstances and kind of rise above our circumstances through education. So for me, um, I'm really close to my elder sister and she's um, a doctor. And I was like, hmm, I want to do that. I want to be where she is. I want to do what she's doing. Um, and then believe it or not, when matric results came, 
my physics mark was putrid. <laughs> it was absolutely terrible. So I didn't get into um, I didn't get into meds uh, to medicine. I I applied to UCT, didn't get in. I applied to UJ, and because I'm in Cape Town from a really conservative family, my my family was like, no, you are not going to live in Johannesburg on your own. Um, so then my second choice was to become a chartered accountant. And at that stage, full disclosure, full honesty, what kind of drove me was the idea that, hey, chartered accountants earn lots of money and there's all these opportunities. Um, and that's really what got me into it. Um, was it an easy road? Absolutely not. As I'm sure you, you can understand, Chanel, and so many people watching this can understand, it's not an easy road. But is it worth it? Absolutely. I am loving my life. You know, when, when people tell you that the CASA designation is literally just a key to so many doors. Now, when you hear it, you're like, hmm, you're, you're full of cap. Um, this can't be as, as amazing as you make it sound. But honestly, the CASA designation opens so many doors for you to do whatever you want to. And I, th I think it's important that we just cap it and add a little disclosure that or disclaimer that it's really what you make of it. So it's a key to all those tools, but you really have to pick up the key, put it in the door and turn it. Um, because so many people who think that, ah, I need to get the designation and I've made it, but no, it's really what you do with it. And I'm, I'm really happy and proud of what I've made of my designation. So, Salman, you've told us that it's worth it. I really liked when you said that it's a key and you need to turn that key because there's many doors actually that this key fits into and you just need to decide which door you're going to open. You know, you took the opportunity, you went abroad, you were in Boston, you're now in Ireland, you went out of audit, you are now an associate director at the, you said it was a private equity firm? So you have opened so many doors with the same key. And that's the thing that I think the younger versions of ourselves needs to know, that it's not just yeah. audit. It's not just working at a firm in South Africa. It, that's not the end all and be all of it all. There are so many other opportunities. And you're an author as well. You've written auditing textbooks. So, I mean, there's so much more things that we can do and we can become oh with the CASA designation. Um, my next question is, Salman, how long was your journey and was the length of your journey um, also worth it considering where you are right now? So for me, I had a fairly easy but really difficult um, journey. And I'll, I'll explain a bit more about that in, in a second. So. I came out of high school and aside from the physics mark that I already told you about, I was a really, really good student. Um, so I came into my first year of, of university and I was like, you know what, I'm going to kill this. I'm smart. I can put in minimal effort and just wing it. And the reality hit me like an absolute train crash in the sense that in my first semester, I... Um, I failed um, a subject and because I failed that subject I wasn't allowed to do the follow-on subjects in the second semester so for, for those who don't know the chartered accounting journey is seven years in the sense that you do four years um, of studying three years undergrad one year postgrad and then do your three years of articles for me that turned into eight years um, because in my first semester, I was like, hmm, I'm going to wing this, which um, in hindsight was not the right thing to do. But at the same time, it provided that necessary catalyst to skyrocket me because I'm sure you, as Chanel can attest to, um, after that semester, I really pulled up my socks and I worked my ass off. Um, and from the, with that hard work, my journey was easy in the sense that I just progressed and progressed and progressed. Um, but there's, there's many people who have a longer journey in the sense that the chartered accounting or the BCom accounting degree is really difficult and it really requires you to work really hard and consistently. Um, but for me, fortunately, I had enough support from my family, my friends, my now wife to make that the easy part. Um, and for me, the difficult part 
was more all the anxiety and the emotional distress and the mental um, health that you're kind of sacrificing along that journey. Um, when it came to articles, Again, so myself and Chanel, we did academic articles, which essentially means that for your first year, provided that your academics are good enough, you can lecture at a university that is psycho accredited. Um, so I did that and it was honestly such an amazing experience. Um, through that, I got into the opportunities of authoring, um, which was a blessing. But then I got to EY in my second year of articles. And the crazy thing was that even though I was just in the door, I was technically a second year. And that was a struggle in the sense that you were given so much responsibility. We, we um, in reality, you were on the same page as the first years. Um, so that really took a toll on my mental and emotional well being. And from there, it was really struggle just to get through articles, even though. I, I, I was not a poor um, trainee. I just wasn't living up to my, ex my own expectations. And that can be difficult for anyone when you feel as though you're letting yourself down. Um, but I qualified. Um, I moved on to better and bright things. And to be honest with you, I cannot see myself doing anything more. I am absolutely loving life right now. I love what my designation and what all of those sacrifices have afforded me, the, the opportunities. And then also just like Chanel was saying, that little key that you can use to open all those doors, it is ridiculously worth it if you're putting in the time, the effort and the consistency to actually get that key and turn it. Yeah, no, that is... An awesome story. I know that feeling of, am I actually living up to my own expectation? Am I worthy of being a second year, even though it's my first time looking at an audit work paper and just managing those relationships? Because now you're starting out as a second year. You have juniors below you. But goodness, I haven't even done what they are currently doing. How do I coach? How do I, um, you know, help them? and the expectation on management on you because you are an academic articles clerk. To, in, to them, you are immediately set apart from in, everyone else and you have to perform. Mm -hmm. um, so I can definitely relate to that. And I know that that wasn't an easy journey, but like you said, it was completely worth it. Look at where you are now and what you are able to not only give yourself, but as I think, as we've understood growing older, it's about and becoming older is what can we give our kids? What better yeah. life can we give them? What is the future that we want for them? The struggles that we don't want them to have that we had growing up or, yeah. you know, that type of thing. Completely, and to, be, and to be honest with you, Chanel, it's, it's a good point you're raising because I think a lot of the people that's going to be watching this video are just like you and I, um, little poor black boys, poor colored boys and girls that are really using the studies and the education to break boundaries, to break barriers, and really break the cycle of poverty. And it's so important to understand that making your way through that journey and allowing yourself that platform to actually break the cycle, give future generations what you couldn't get, it's extremely important and extremely worth it. I have a, a four-year-old son right now and just, looking, <laughs> and just looking at the life that he has versus the life that I have, even though my mom did her absolute utmost to give us a good life, it's worlds apart in, in contrast. Um, and to be honest with you, I can only give my son that life because of the fact that I really worked my ass off. I used this platform, which is a CASA designation, and I really um, ran with it. So to anybody that's watching this, hang in there, stick it through. It's going to be worth it if you utilize the opportunity. I love it. So Salman, you've mentioned certain trials that have taken place over your eight-year journey and even beyond that because you are now qualified to CA for about four years, I think. Um, so was there any special event that took place during that time where you were like, you know what, it doesn't matter what I'm going through right now, I am going to change my mindset and I'm going to 
get my CASA regardless of what it costs, regardless of all the emotional and mental struggles that you were going through, as you have noted. To be honest with you, the biggest thing that kept me going was the support that I have. And you can teach this channel, you were there throughout the journey. Um, we've had loads of instances where we just moaned to each other about what's happening. I remember we were sitting one day, myself, you and, and Sadiq, we were having sushi. And I think the entire two hours that we were there, I was just complaining. I was literally just complaining about my experience in articles. And what really got me going was the support of my family and friends. My amazing wife has been through it with me through everything. Um, outside of that, it was really the drive to give myself, my family, and my mom a better life. Um, because as, as you are aware, I'm sure you're doing the same. You're, you're in a position to really give back to all the people whose shoulders you stood on throughout this journey. And for me, that's really what, what kept me going, being able to, for example, when I was in Ireland and my mom wanted to come, I could buy a ticket, bring her over and just really spoil her. Um, and the idea of that, the idea of breaking those cyclical barriers and circumstances is really what pushed me outside of um, the emotional and mental support that I got from my support structures, which were my friends and my family. Now, it's also important to put it out there because there might be someone watching this who doesn't necessarily have that support. Um, with the, the family or the friends, they might be an only child, they might not have parents that's with them. For various circumstances, I think it's important to take away the fact that you need to stick in there, hang on and push through because it would really be worth it. If not for the people around you and your loved ones and the people that supported you, it's going to be worth it for yourself. Absolutely. And, you know, that giving the people who have helped you along your journey, just giving them that better lifestyle, you know, bringing your mom over. I know the type of, I don't want to really say pride, but the type of joy that it gives you within, you know, to see your mom happy, to see her um, really enjoying life and thriving outside of her usual environment, which is South Africa and actually seeing the world. I think that is such a blessing that a child can, you know, give to their parents and you will only be rewarded for that, Salman, you know, and that is why you are so blessed because you are a blessing to your mom and even your siblings. I know the help that you've been to them because of this journey, you've also been able to assist them in life. And that is such a huge achievement, being able to help others being able to transfer your knowledge the way you're doing now through this video to other people, it's amazing. So well done on that. You are a success story if there ever was one and you know oh, that yes, I yes. am immensely <laughs> proud of you. <laughs> so Salman, I think it was in 2017 when we got those APC results. Now we studied yes. together and we exchanged notes <laughs> during those five days. So I want to know, and we had a phone call after, so I know your reaction, but I want you to tell the viewers, what was that feeling and what was your reaction when you got the news that you passed your APC exam and it was finally over? Jeez, like... It's, it's crazy because just as you're talking about it and as I'm remembering um, that, that specific moment, like I'm getting little goosebumps because like I said, this journey is not easy and I, I didn't have it easy um, either. For example, like I mentioned we were poor, so like not many of my friends know this or the people who's going to be watching this know this, but like I had to stand in lines for NISPIS or to get my results because of the fact that my fees weren't paid and then eventually my results spoke for themselves and I got the bursary but all of those small things really added to making the journey difficult so when I got that message um, I, I still remember my wife and I we went to I think it's is geez, there's I think it's Granger Bay there's a little um, little beach in Granger Bay and we went and we stood on the rocks 
and we we were, we were just waiting because this this happened after an event with all my colleagues we went for lunch so from the i got my wife from work and we went just to this little beach on the rocks we were alone and we're just waiting for that message um the message eventually came and i swear to god i shouted like a crazy person like this wave of relief just overwhelmed me and like honestly it's an inexplicable amount of joy just knowing that look it's over it's absolutely over all you have to kind of do now is serve a month or two of time and then you're done your journey has it's, it hasn't ended but the really hard part of your journey has um and and now you're kind of equipped with the tools you need so for me it was this really cathartic moment of joy we I, I honestly just shouted and then my wife hugged me and at the at the risk of sounding like a, a cry baby, I honestly started tearing up um, because it was done, it was cathartic. And then after that, I'm pretty sure we spoke over the phone and we had, we had our own moment because it was really just such a win and going through that journey and the win with all the people that were with you throughout it, it just made it so much so much more worth it it was it was amazing unbelievable yeah no it is an awesome experience to know that it is finally over i only have and if you have your competencies in the bag already it's like i'm done <laughs> i'm done i can be released <laughs> um, so i completely understand that and that is it's a joyful moment it's like a moment of gratitude mm -hmm. thankfulness that you know i've come to this point this eight years this past eight years was completely worth it um amazing amazing salman final question for you today so i know you've said that you don't regret being a chartered accountant at all that you absolutely loved your journey in terms of where you are right now and the lessons that you've learned but tell us and you say the thing about the doctor but now where you are now in your life if you could choose any other occupation, what would it be? So to be honest with you, hey, um, what, what I've come to realize about myself is that I really love working with people and teaching because through that you can really see yourself adding value to people's lives. And like I, I, I really think I'm good at it. Um, so if if I wasn't doing what I'm doing right now, I think I'd be in the academic space. I loved authoring, um, I loved imparting knowledge and I, and I enjoy just working with people and teaching and kind of the whole idea of imparting knowledge and experiences and getting people through their own journey. Um, it, it's, it's really the sense of like, the sense of adding actual value to people's life. Because let's be honest, I'm in private equity now. I'm making rich people richer. That, that's the reality. But if I was in education, <laughs> <laughs> if I was in education, I would actually be adding value to people's lives. So if not for what I'm doing now, I'd definitely be in the education space. I actually, even last year, there's a local university and because the partner knew how much I like teaching, um, he actually put me up for a part-time lecturer position. And I, I did it because I, I love teaching and I enjoyed it so much. Yes. Um, but I, I do need a bit more action. And um, teaching is, is very passive. It can be a nine to five job. Don't get me wrong. There's lots of after hours things and effort that goes into it. So props to all teachers out there. Um, but for me, I need action and pressure points and deadlines. Um, and, and, and deadlines. Do you know what I mean? So I don't see myself doing anything else. But if, if I had to, I'd go into the academic space. Definitely. Thank you so much, Salman, for sharing your experiences, sharing what you've been through, how you've overcome it, and the joy that you're experiencing now and the blessings that you are able to bestow upon your family members and those close to you around you and the life that you can give your wife and son and uh, future children, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> 
absolutely loved having you on Chats with Shawnee. And I'm sure that the viewers also would love your input. So thank you so much, friend. And I'd just like to, before you say goodbye, is there any last bit of advice um, that you'd like to give the viewers concerning the CASA journey? Um, look, first, first and foremost, thank you so much for, for having me. It was really a pleasure. And I hope that we ever watch this is able to take something away and really um, run with it. I think a last piece of advice to anybody doing this journey is to really hang in there. Times are going to be tough. There's going to be moments where you literally just feel like going into a bathroom and crying. I've actually done that before. Um, <laughs> but there's going to be lots of moments where you just feel ridiculously overwhelmed and you think that, and you feel as though everything you're doing is just not enough. It is. So keep on pushing on, hang in there. It's going to be worth it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you again so much, Salman. And thank you everyone for watching Chats with Shani. Thank you for listening to Salman and all his advice. And I really hope that this pays off your own journey. May God bless you and may you have a wonderful day further. Bye.